What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was a pretty boring one in terms of software, as we only got an iOS 14.7 beta update, we did not see an iOS 15 beta update, or anything else, which was actually somewhat surprising, but that just kind of means that this upcoming week should be a fun one with multiple releases. So anyways, in this video, I wanted to discuss the latest with iOS 15 developer and public beta 2, in terms of the additional features and changes, the battery life, and the performance, which has actually been quite interesting for me this week. So we'll also discuss iOS 14.7 beta 5 and why we did not get the final version of 14.7 yet, along with the latest leaks and rumors surrounding upcoming Apple products like the iPhone 12s or 13, the next MacBook Air, and more. So let's first talk about some additional new features and changes found in iOS 15 beta 2. Now, some of these were also present in beta 1, but as you guys know, there are just so many new features in iOS 15 as a whole, over 500 features, you know, maybe more than that. And so it's gonna take a while to actually discover all of them. But anyways, the latest one that I just recently discovered is that you guys know the live text feature where you can pull up you know text you have this little icon down in the bottom right and it shows you what can be copied and things like that or links that you can click on well this actually works for shipping labels and tracking numbers so if i press the little live text button down there in the bottom right you can see it kind of highlights everything that i can copy you know that it sees as text but you can see right here we have a tracking number where it says ups ground and if i tap on that take a look at this so sometimes it takes a little bit to pull up but you can see right there and that's actually a bug it shows up way up here in the top left but anyways you can see it actually says track shipment and when you tap on that it knows that it's a ups package and it shows you the tracking information for that specific label which is crazy that you could do that so no longer do you have to type it in or anything like that you can just pull it up and click on it straight from a photo and see the tracking information which is really really cool this live text feature is just amazing and the best part about it is it's just going to continue getting better as you know apple's ai gets better and speaking of the photos application if you have a photo with a face in it and you swipe up you will see that you actually get the little face icon down in the bottom left hand corner so your device will automatically you know detect that face if you have it saved you know as a person in your albums and if you tap on that it's actually going to take you to that person so let me go and swipe up let me try that again tap on it you can see there it shows show album manage tagged photos feature less or untag so you have all of that right there so if you want to see the album with all that person you can do that but i just like how it shows that little circle down there in the bottom left when you swipe up it's really neat now we can also toggle siri and siri shortcuts for background app refresh so we can actually turn that off if we want to now so if we go into our settings and then to general background app refresh and go down to the s's you can see we have shortcuts and siri right there both of those are able to be toggled off for background app refresh if you want to i would personally recommend having those on but you can at least now have the option to turn those off if you want to and speaking of small changes you can see when you search for the clock application inside of spotlight search it actually shows the correct time now on the app icon so you can see there it shows 12 39 whereas on ios 14 you can see there it does not show the correct time it shows like 10 09 or something like that so it was not accurate before but now it actually shows the real time in spotlight search here in iOS 15. Now also inside of the Maps application, you can see here, I'm doing a little route to Chick-fil-A as usual. And this is a bug I've noticed, by the way, in iOS 15, it really does not populate the map sometimes, no matter how good your connection is, it will do something like that up top. But one thing I noticed is you can see this right here. So actually, and it was at the very end right there. So let me go ahead and pause. You can see that now in iOS 15, it asks you how your route was. So after you finish going somewhere on a route, you can see it asks you how was your route to Chick Chick-fil-A and you can you know thumbs that up or thumbs that down and I'm assuming that will just help Apple determine you know if their routes are accurate if they're the fastest and things like that and maybe learn from you know the patterns and maybe you know suggest a different route next time or something like that so you can now do that in maps in iOS 15 whereas that never came up in iOS 14. And then the next thing I want to mention is not a new feature it's actually one that I've covered before but you guys know how you have the video effects and the mic mode here so this is mainly when you're in like FaceTime or something like that so you have the mic modes right here so you have standard voice isolation and wide spectrum so that is known but I don't know about you guys but if you've tested these and I've asked multiple people 
but both voice isolation and wide spectrum sound dramatically worse in quality than the standard microphone. So I'm not sure if this is a bug on Apple's end or you know maybe these just aren't as good as they will be, but both of these are actually terrible quality. According to the people I talked to, they say that standard sounds the best by far. So that's just one interesting thing I've noticed. You know, I've talked about this before, but I've continuously asked and I've continuously played around with this to see if it's gotten better, but it seems like standard is still the way to go. If you are wondering about this, I would recommend keeping it on standard and you know, just leaving it there because it seems to be the best for FaceTime video and audio calls. So while we have a lot of new features and changes here in iOS 15 beta 2, we also have quite a few bugs that are still outstanding and some that have actually just gotten a lot worse with beta 2. So beta 1 of course was, you know, a typical beta 1. We had a lot of issues and beta 2 on the surface really fixed a lot of those issues. But, you know, over time, and I've noticed, you know, after two weeks of using beta two, it's really not all that much better than beta one, which I never thought I would say. And I'll tell you guys why. I mean, one of the biggest things for me is app specific notification sounds. So especially for Snapchat, for ESPN, there's multiple applications I have with their own unique notification sound. And I just get the default notification sound for those applications every time. Even after a reboot sometimes, it still persists. So that's one annoying issue I've been having. Also, I've had quite a few messages bugs. So if I go in here, I did take a screenshot of a message bug right here. You can see I sent a video in this thread right here. This is a video and then it just disappeared and turned all white. And then also down here at the bottom, it shows that the focus mode message is showing up twice. So it's showing as duplicated there. And it says notification silence with focus two different times. So I've just had quite a few bugs inside of the messages application. And that's been another thing I've noticed, you know, pretty much every single day. Also, a lot of people are still having the issue with music where you get the 15 second bug where you start playing music for 15 seconds, then it just stops and you pretty much, you know, can't listen to your music in Apple Music. And it's a known bug. I talked about this in my 14.7 video, but that is still persisting here in iOS 15 beta 2. I do think that's a server side issue with Apple Music since it is happening on Android as well, but it could be fixed in a software update. It's hard to tell at this point. Also, the Wi-Fi, I've been having really strange issues with Wi-Fi where my Wi-Fi will just completely stop working and I have to go on LTE, like even for Google. So sometimes I'll just go into Safari and be doing a Google search. Like I could just search for, you know, I don't know, just a random thing I just thought of, GI Joe. And then I search for it and I just see the bar down there. It's just not loading at all. And then I go to turn Wi-Fi off to go on the cellular and then it loads instantly. And this happens constantly and that does not happen on ios 14 i know it's not my router it is definitely ios 15 beta 2 just still having pretty major wi-fi connectivity issues where it's just not responsive or just takes a really long time to load and at first you know i thought it was the private relay so if you go into your icloud here and then go to icloud and then if we go to you can see it still kind of hangs right here so this is another thing with beta 2 and then to private relay right here so i turned this off and sometimes I will notice that it automatically turns itself back on sometimes, or it just will not stay off when you want it to. So even after I turn that off, you know, I'm still having the issues with Wi-Fi, so it's not related to private relay. Although I am having separate issues with private relay, just randomly turning on, even though I have it disabled. And I've also been having issues with airdrop here on beta two. I did not have issues on beta one, but on beta two, I'm having pretty major issues with airdrop where it just doesn't work. I go to send something to my Mac or to another iPhone and I just can't, it just says sending and it sits there and spins around and just never sends the video or the image, no matter how big or small the file is, it just does not send. I've tried going into airplane mode, turning airdrop off and on all of that and nothing works. Airdrop is just very spotty here in iOS 15 beta two. I'm also still having issues with apps crashing on beta two. So I did not have as many apps crash in beta one as I've had on beta two, like especially in Safari. Safari actually crashes a lot more than it did in beta one. And I've noticed that when you close out of multiple tabs quickly, that's when it seems to crash. Let me see if I could try to replicate this here. So of course it doesn't work this time, but sometimes, you know, it will show that. So this is actually, I don't know if this is new or not. They automatically close tabs after you close out of all your tabs. I'm not sure if I got that prompt in iOS 14, but it does prompt you now after you close out of all your tabs. So I'm just going to do not do automatically. And I know that settings not new. I just didn't know if that pop-up was new right there, but yeah, Safari sometimes will crash when you close out of tabs quickly. Uh, I've had other applications just crash randomly. I've also had some really weird stutter issues. So like if I go right here, this is a screen 
recording that I did when apps were just opening really slow, you can see kind of the stutter when I go in and out of an application. So sometimes when I go out of an application and I try to go back in quickly, there's just some stutter there you could see, and it doesn't really show the full effect, but sometimes the icon will be like raised and just really glitched out. So I've really had some performance issues here on beta two, especially over the past week. So the first week, you know, was fine. The first week and a half really was fine. But for whatever reason, over the past week on my iPhone 12 Pro, performance has really slipped on beta two. So I am really looking forward to beta three now a lot more than I was last week. So not sure what's going on, but performance has definitely been taking a hit lately and just the lag and just the crashing issues have gotten worse. And just to add on to the performance, I did also notice a very specific you know, issue that causes lag here on beta two. And that is that when I get a incoming notification, like a text message, for example, at the same time as I'm opening up another application, like for example, if I was getting a text message and right once I open up Twitter, that text message came in, there will be like a 10 second lag on the application I'm opening up. And then sometimes it also causes a respring. So that's another issue I've faced and just really performance issues. Like I said, a lot more rampant now than I remembered and within the first like week and a half of installing beta 2. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life feels about the same as it has ever since beta 2 was released. I've really had no big difference. It is slightly better than beta 1. I can definitely say that it's definitely better than beta 1, but it's still not great on my 12 Pro here. Battery life is at least decent on my iPad Pro, my M1 iPad Pro, but on the iPhone iOS, it's just not great. I mean, I've been saying that for a while. It's better than beta 1, like I said, but after using iOS 14.7 for a little while, the battery life is so much better on 14.7. I mean, of course, it's a stable release. It's, it's still on a beta, but we're on 14.7 versus 15.0. So of course I understand that, but still the battery life is just much more, you know, much better on iOS 14. And we definitely have a lot of room for improvement for the battery life here in iOS 15. And we can take a further look at iOS 15 beta 2's battery life right here. You can see today's usage was pretty interesting because you can see I did actually go from about 80% down to about 10%. You can see the graph right there. So battery life wasn't terrible. It's definitely been worse some days throughout this week. I did use it a lot today. So I had about 10 hours of on-screen time and about an hour and a half of off-screen time or screen off time. But you can see there that slight decline right there going from, you know, maybe like four o'clock to five o'clock. So not sure what was going on there, but you can kind of see, I guess, messages for whatever reason was using a lot of battery life right there. So just interesting battery life definitely has some room for improvement as expected on a beta release. So now what is next for Apple? When are we going to see iOS 15 public and developer beta three? So today is July 11th. And of course on June 30th is when we saw iOS 15 public beta two, and also the re-release of iOS 15 developer beta two. So that tells me that we are two weeks away from that is when we should see iOS 15 beta three. So that puts us on the 14th if it's going to be exactly two weeks from when we got the second beta. So of course, since we had that re-release, I think that's why it kind of messed with the schedule because of course we got beta two for developers the week prior. So we thought that, you know, this previous week right here, maybe on the seventh is when we would see iOS 15 beta three developer beta three. And then the week after we'd see public beta, but that's not the case. So it seems like Apple is going to be releasing the developer and the public betas within the same week. And it's probably going to be this week. So the week of the 12th is when we should see iOS 15 public and developer betas. So I would expect at least a day, you know, between the two, it's hard to say. I mean, sometimes Apple waits up to a week to release the public beta, but in this case, I would not expect it to be more than just like a couple of days, maybe just one day. So we should see it again. The 14th would be exactly two weeks. So that is a good bet right there. Tuesday or Wednesday, I think we could see iOS 15 developer beta three, and then another day next week, we should see the public beta three, or I guess this week we should see public beta three as well. Now, as for iOS 14.7, we did get beta five last week, which was kind of interesting because we did expect a public release or at least an RC build of iOS 14.7 because we've been in beta for so long, but I do see an RC coming this week. So of course I can see that coming really any day this week is when we could see an RC build of iOS 14.7. I think there is even the slight possibility of seeing the final release this week. 
you know, we'll probably see that next week, but it is possible to get it this week as well. But nonetheless, I do expect to see iOS 14.7 released to the public within the next two weeks with a fix for that Wi-Fi bug that I mentioned on Twitter. And then also just, you know, some added features in there. And of course, some big bug fixes as well. Now, aside from the software side of things, we did also have some Apple news come out over the past week that I wanted to briefly run through. So first off, we do have some news surrounding the upcoming M2 chip. And it looks like the 2022 MacBook Air will be the first device to get this next generation chipset. So this rumor comes courtesy of Dylan DKT on Twitter, who has a pretty decent track record. And he said this, just wanted to share some details on when to expect the next generation M2, not the M1X, which is reserved for the Pro Mac devices. This processor is on track to release in the first half of 2022, alongside the upcoming colorful MacBook Air. So you can see here, he says that not only will these new Air models have the M2 chip, but they will also reportedly come in colorful colors. I'm guessing kind of similar to like what we saw with the M1 iMac. And speaking of the MacBook Air, Ming-Chi Ko is saying that it will not only be getting new colors in that M2 chip, but it will also have a redesign and a mini LED screen. So I did not think that the MacBook Air would be getting a mini LED display. I thought that would only be for like the MacBook Pro models, but it's looking like Apple could be bringing this display technology to all MacBook models pretty soon. Now, moving on to the 2022 iPhones, the Alec says that all models will be getting the long desired 120 hertz display. So of course, later this year with the 2021 iPhone, which, you know, iPhone 12s, iPhone 13, whatever it's gonna be called, we will be seeing the pro models get this new display. But next year, even the base model iPhone could be getting that 120 hertz display we've all been wanting for years now. And speaking of this year's iPhone, it seems more and more likely as time goes on that it will be called the iPhone 12s and not the iPhone 13. But not only will this 12S have the performance improvements like we get every year, especially with an S year, it's usually like the same design and performance improvements. But with the iPhone 12S, it's looking like it's going to have a much bigger camera array, according to leaked cases. So this was posted on Weibo originally and then posted onto Twitter. But you can see just how much bigger the lenses are, which is pretty interesting. And this should mean in theory that we'll see a major new camera feature this year probably for the pro models, probably the pro max model, but we should see some pretty big improvements to the camera if the size is any indication. But there you have it guys. That is the latest on iOS 15 beta two, the latest on iOS 14.7, and of course the latest on the latest Apple leaks and rumors. So hope you guys enjoyed these videos as always. If you do, I would appreciate if this video got a thumbs up. And of course, let me know in a comment down below how iOS 15 is running for you right now. And when you're expecting to see iOS 15 beta three, or at least what's the, what's the biggest feature or fix you wanna see in beta three? That's a better question to ask you guys let me know down there in a comment below and of course subscribe so you don't miss the beta 3 coverage i planned that should be coming this week but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon